Good morning. My name is Ben Phillips, and I'm the pastor here at First Baptist Church Murphy. And I'm so thankful that you've joined us for this Easter sunrise service. I uh, just have a couple of announcements. Uh, we're going to have the sunrise service, and then Sunday school at 9.15, and worship at 10.30. So you're going to see our worship team. They're going to lead us in a wonderful time of, of worship. And then they actually did that in the sanctuary. But I'm going to be outside while the sun's coming up as we talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So worship along with us, sing out loud, and then uh, we'll see you back here in just a moment.
And I'm so thankful that you've chosen to join us for this Easter sunrise service. And just want you to know that uh, we're excited for just everything that's going to happen uh, today. One of the things about me, I grew up on a small farm in southern Illinois. And growing up on a small farm, we were up in the dark uh, every day uh, of my childhood. And, and we would oftentimes get finished with our chores even before the sun came up. I also grew up hunting and fishing, so I was outside a lot and saw a lot of sunrises. One of the things as you look at scripture, uh, Jesus was, he frequently got up early in the morning while it was still dark to spend time praying to the Father. Even David would uh, get up early in the morning and long to spend time uh, with Jesus. When I was 10 years old, I made a decision to trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then in college, somebody discipled me and actually showed me how to spend time studying my Bible and encouraged me to have a daily time where I'd get up and read and study and pray. And so that really became, became my regular uh, habit and discipline and has been uh, since that time. So I've experienced about 50 years worth of sunrises in my lifetime. I love seeing the, the world come awake as the sun peaks over the horizon. One of the things that we've experienced here in Murphy the last several weeks is we've had a lot of rain and clouds and then you add on top of that everything with the coronavirus and the shelter in place. Uh, it's just been kind of a, a dark season for many of us, especially if you know someone who's gotten sick or perhaps even you or if you've known a loved one who maybe has even succumbed to this virus and passed away. So we all, if we've lived long enough, we've gone through some dark seasons. One of the things as you look in the scriptures, you see the disciples of Jesus Christ, they went through a dark season. They had spent three years with Jesus and then all of a sudden he's arrested, he's tried, he's beaten and tortured, and then he's hung on a cross to die. And he does die. And they take him off that cross and they put him alone in a dark tomb. But one of the things that we're going to see here in just a moment is that Jesus has risen from the dead. And because of that, there's hope, there's life, there's light, there's joy, there's eternal life. If you look in the scriptures in John chapter 20, one of the first persons to arrive at the tomb uh, was Mary Magdalene. She'd gotten up early while it was still dark to, to go to the tomb. And when she got there, the stone was rolled away. Jesus wasn't in the tomb. So what does she do? She leaves and she goes and she tells the disciples that Jesus had risen from the dead, that he wasn't there. And so in the Gospel of John, you, you see that John is telling this story and oftentimes in his gospel, he refers to himself as the other disciple. And he tells the story how the other disciple and Peter, they're running together toward the tomb. But the other disciple gets there first. See, competition for guys has been a thing all along. And John gets there first, but he doesn't go in. Peter is right be behind him. He gets there and he goes in the tomb and he sees the grave clothes there, but no Jesus. Jesus had risen from the dead. And so we see that Jesus first appeared to Mary Magdalene, the one who uh, approached the tomb first. And then you see Jesus later on appear to a couple of disciples who are walking along the road to Emmaus. And as they're walking, they don't really understand who he is, but he's telling them the story about how the Messiah must suffer and die, 
before he can be glorified. And then I love what scripture says in Luke chapter 24, verse 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them and all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And slowly but surely, Jesus revealed himself to multiple disciples. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul tells about some of those disciples who saw Jesus. And in fact, uh, Jesus even revealed himself to over a crowd of 500 who saw the risen Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a verifiable fact. I believe it's true. I'm staking my life, my eternity, on the fact that Jesus was crucified, dead, and buried, and then on the third day rose again from the dead. That truth has changed my life. It's changed my marriage. It's changed my family. It's changed my work and my hobbies and my schooling. It's changed everything that I do. Saved from darkness to light, from mourning to rejoicing, from despair to to hope, from eternal death to eternal life. Now, whether you're watching this live or watching it some other time, I've got a question for you. Are you alone living in darkness without hope, without any direction in your life? Do you know for certain where you will spend eternity? Just as you've experienced the joy of and the magnificence of watching a sunrise behind me, you too can experience the joy and the wonder and the hope and the excitement of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, Scripture says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. And so I want to encourage you to take that step of faith, to turn from your sins and to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Here at First Baptist Murphy, that's why we're here. We're here to help you to come alongside with you and help you learn what it means to trust in Jesus and to grow in your walk with Jesus so that you in turn can tell other people about him. In fact, our mission statement here at First Baptist Murphy, First Baptist Murphy is a gospel-centered family of many cultures and generations that exist to magnify Christ and multiply disciples and mobilize missionaries. We're all about the gospel, the good news of Jesus, who was crucified, dead, and buried, and rose again on the third day. And we're here to offer you hope and to give you through the scriptures and point you to the scriptures that there is a path to eternal life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for everybody who's here listening and watching. Lord, that you would speak to their hearts. Lord, that as they open up your word, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them. Lord, that they would see the sin in their life and their need for a savior. And Father, that you would enable them through the power of your spirit to confess you as their Lord and savior, to turn from their sins and to believe in their hearts that Jesus really was crucified, dead and buried and rose again on the third day. And that through that faith that they place in you, Lord, that they might have that relationship with you and know for certain that they will spend eternity in heaven with you. So, Lord, I pray that you would uh, guide us throughout the rest of this day and, and the things that we're going to encounter with you. And, Lord, we pray that many people would have hope, Lord, that they would be encouraged, Lord, that they would hear the story in the scriptures about Jesus, and their life too might be changed. In your name we pray.